National Guard, which is total nonsense. We all know that if you follow the program. But he says, I, I think that those are both born out of a concern of subterfuge, that there was going to be somebody to come into this country uh, who did not have loyalty to this country, who wanted to make it into something that was different and then confiscate the weapons. Right. Okay. I think uh, so, too. Sounds very I agree familiar. with Warren's tribe on yeah. that. I just disagree Nailed with it. him that that's not <laughs> what's happening. Okay. Yeah. Let's go to uh, Darren McBreen and the Twitter room. Darren. coverage of the debates because everything you just talked about is not going to be mentioned during the debates tonight and it's not going to be followed up on the mainstream media so that's that's awesome but uh yeah once again Darren McBreen I'll be here at the Twitter booth here at our Infowars.com studios in Austin Texas and for the next couple of hours or so during the debate I'll be monitoring Facebook I'll be checking out the Twitter feeds and I want to hear from you send us your questions and comments to at real Alex Jones be sure to use the hashtag GOP debate. And I tell you something, folks, this is your opportunity to get your opinion heard, to get your voice out there, because let's face it, we have an army of info warriors out there, and together we can hijack social media, we can hijack Facebook, hijack Twitter, and a lot of people are, as you know, paying attention to this debate tonight, so we need your help to separate the truth from the lies. So let's get this party started at Real Alex Jones. Hashtag is GOP debate. Back to you guys at the political science theater. <laughs> Thank you, Darren. And we have uh, also reporters on site in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. We've got Joe Biggs ready to tell us what he's seen earlier today. Joe. Thank you, Dave. Uh, that's right. We're live in front of the North Charleston Coliseum where the debate is actually going to be taking place. Um, we've had a chance to actually come out here earlier and speak to some people. And it was really odd. We were standing out here early, earlier today and I saw a large crowd of people moving towards us right down this road to my right. And they were marching up screaming. I couldn't understand what was being said. And there was about 30 Rand Paul protesters uh, screaming and yelling, wondering why Rand Paul wasn't allowed to be in this debate. Uh, a lot of people were upset about it. You know, they were screaming, ran for president. Uh, I heard Jakari in one of the intros for the nightly news. I could hear the, uh, the video that I took of that happening. It was very powerful. It was really, uh, it was really neat to see these guys come out and show up in a large number to support Rand Paul and the fact that he should be here, seeing as how in the polls he has beat quite a few of the candidates that are going to be here tonight. Yeah, you know, uh, we were talking about this earlier, Joe, and if they had included that poll, which was taken, there were three polls that finished on Sunday. One of them was embargoed for 36 hours. If they had included that poll, and that poll was conducted by Bloomberg and the Des Moines Register, if Fox News would have included that poll, he would have been tied with Jeb Bush. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's really interesting. Uh, the stuff has come to light, you know, about Ted Cruz with Goldman Sachs. Uh, you know, Donald Trump has made a statement today saying that uh, he will be, uh, you know, hammering uh, Cruz on that as well and trying to get to the bottom of what's going on with that. Apparently his wife has uh, taken leave at this moment in time with this uh, information surfacing. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, Cruz and Trump both kind of battle it out tonight in the first GO uh, GOP debate of 2016. Yeah, and of course, uh, Heidi Cruz has taken leave. I think she took leave a, a while back to work on her yeah. husband's uh, candidacy. Faithful but wife, also, Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I think she took leave as much as anything else to try to uh, distance herself from, Gold from the Sachs. Goldman Sachs yeah. connections. And uh, I think that's why that information and, wasn't reported. On and the this FPC. was information, guys, that we were talking about back in uh, 2013. There's a Kurt Nimmo article out there. and um, Ted Cruz's wife is a Goldman Sachs VP. I exactly. got it right here. So this yeah. is not, not yeah. anything new. They're bringing it out now because he became the front runner, but it's definitely something we should look at. Yeah, if you go back and yeah. you look at uh, before she got to Goldman Sachs, kind of as a transitional thing, uh, she was still working for another bank, and they she was on a uh, committee for the uh, Council on Foreign Relations, CFR committee, that was looking at the North American Union, and the committee's recommendation was that there would be a border that would be patrolled around the perimeter of Canada, the United States, and Mexico. Okay, that was the recommendation of the CFR. And the guy who headed that was the head of Goldman Sachs at the time. After that report came out, Heidi uh, Cruz went to work for Goldman Sachs. So there you go. But of course, it's a, what was it, a den of vipers? Is that what uh, <laughs> what Ted Cruz said about Goldman Sachs? Oh, it sounds <laughs> like oh. CFR, CFR. Yeah, yeah. it applies to Goldman Sachs. Den of, sure. den of vipers, <laughs> and I just happen to have one in my bedroom at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so...
It's, uh, it's, it's absolutely amazing to me, but I think he's got a lot of problems. It's going to be interesting to see if this uh, is going to be brought up, uh, the natural, natural born citizen. I think, as I said in the report, I think that the GOP establishment is going to use that to criticize Trump because we already saw a preview of that with Nikki Haley when she came after Trump, said, you're angry, uh, you're shouting at immigrants and everything. So I think they'll use that to say, look at this guy. He is so, uh, so extremist that he's criticizing Ted Cruz for not being a natural born citizen. I right. think even though they don't, you know, they don't like Cruz at this point, they want to bring him down, they will use him to try to bring down Trump. And I think they're going to take that approach. But it's going to be interesting because now he's got to defend himself on this situation with the um, disclosure of the campaign finance as well as, and it'll be interesting to see if they talk about Ed Snowden. That's one of the things with Rand Paul there that's not going to be talked about, uh, the NSA stuff. They're going to have the same right. questions that they do every four years when they have these debates, the same. I want to fix the questions. economy. I want better education and yeah. so right. on. And I don't so want to talk about those H one B or H two B worker visas. Shh, we, we're going to yeah. we're going to create jobs. We're not bringing in a bunch of people to take your jobs. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no so. one will be there to contend them on that as well. So and this is going to be the Fox Business Channel. So they'll probably uh, talk to them about the economy. How can they create jobs? And again, you know, if they tell you that they're going to that they're creating jobs, they're going to create jobs. They're lying to you. Right. What well, David, do oh, is get out of the way. Yes. Uh, Fox News, they've been hyping this debate all week long and they're they expect they're saying it's going to be a total brawl right that the gloves are finally going to come off yeah mm -hmm. and that remains to be seen but they even they went as far as saying that uh, Donald Trump is going to be viciously attacked by uh, Dr. Ben Carson tonight uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens there but you know well, that yeah, could really backfire on Ben Carson because that what doesn't kill Donald Trump only makes him stronger. Yeah. But here's what you won't see tonight. You won't see any of the, the moderators asking the real tough questions, right? Because that, that's not their mm -hmm. role. Mm -hmm. And we know that, that only a handful of corporations, six corporations in total, own the entire mainstream news media. And, and it's these corporations, they're the ones that are, uh, that are making the rules. They're the ones that are running the debates. So... You know, any question that's asked by Fox, it's going to be premeditated. It's going to be scripted and pre-approved. Right. And I don't and know if we've got that, that commercial that Jeb Bush put out about uh, attacking Marco Rubio for his height <laughs> and for flip uh, for his position on immigration, of all things. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a really tacky, child, uh, childish uh, attack from Jeb Bush on Marco Rubio. Absolutely amazing. We're talking about the tough questions, Darren. I think that's what they consider to be tough questions, right. asking questions of them about their personal lives right. or asking Ted Cruz about the situation with Goldman Sachs, not asking them questions about what they would do with an out of control surveillance state mm -hmm. or what they would do about the failed war on drugs for 44 years. They're going to just keep pretending that that's just fine. Everything well, is working fine. with. And that. this is why I think Rand Paul was not invited back, yes. because even though they might not ask him the questions, He's, he's more than likely going to bring it up, yes. right? I mean, he's the only yeah. guy out there that's talking about auditing the, the uh, auditing the Fed. Okay, I mean, there you go. Uh, and then you notice Ted Cruz, like we were saying earlier, he was a no-show. His I guess his wife didn't want him to go vote on that. But um, Rand Paul, he might bring up the 28 pages, which yeah. is proof that the Saudi Arabian government was heavily involved in the 9-11 attacks. And Rand Paul, and you got to give um, Donald Trump credit as well, they are both talking about the Obama administration's role in the creation and funding of ISIS. So, That's correct. That's uh, correct. So at least Rand Paul's not going to be there to talk about that tonight. And, of course, he might also bring up, as he did in the last debate, the insanity of declaring a no-fly zone over Syria. Yeah. And Donald Trump said, I don't think that's a good idea. He wouldn't say that it was total insanity, like Dr. Strangelove level insanity. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Rand Paul did, and he was absolutely right to talk about it. The rest of the guys want to pretend, except as you point out, uh, Donald Trump and Rand Paul, the rest of them want to pretend that ISIS is some organic uh, thing that grew up out of the Middle East instead of something that we created and nurtured and equipped and trained. Uh, they want to pretend that it is something external to American foreign policy and the CIA. And we know that's not true. That's right. Yeah. And it's been going on for a while because a lot of people point to the Obama administration. Yes, it, he definitely has something to do with it, but you can go back to the Mujahideen with Reagan. You know, oh, yeah. uh, the movie Charlie Wilson's War was loosely based on that. And people can see that. You can even see uh, Mrs. Clinton, of all people, saying, we, we're fighting the people that we funded many years ago, and we just keep going through the same cycle. You just change the names of the people. You change the different guys in office, and the cycle continues.
We had an article on Infowars.com a few weeks ago talking about how going all the way back to the 1960s, it was American intelligence policy that we would use the Muslims against the Russians as part of the Cold War to attack them. And we've been doing that since the 1960s. Now they're using the Muslims to take down the West, uh, Europe, as well as the United States. That is the same foreign policy they used against the Russians. Now they're using it against the Western societies to take them down so they can have a globalist government because you have to basically pull everything. There was an article about uh, uh, Detroit, Michigan, I think it was, one of the cities in Michigan where they were destroying all the buildings so they could rebuild the city. That's their policy, just as we saw in, in the Captain America story, right? Yeah. You gotta destroy it so you can rebuild it from the ground up. That's what they want to do to the West and they're using uh, radical Islam to do it just as they have for the last 60 years mm. uh, against Russia. Mm, I didn't see that Wayne Madsen article. Yeah. Check that yeah. out. Okay, so we're just about ready to start. I guess it's, uh, have they, uh, it's just before seven, they're going to uh, start the debate in just a few moments. And again, this is the last uh, debate probably that we'll be covering before the Iowa caucus. That's going to be on uh, Monday, February the 1st. I believe there's going to be one more GOP debate, but that's going to be on a weekend. And of course, we haven't had a Democrat debate coverage yet because they have all been on the weekends. Like, for example, you know, the last sh Saturday shopping before the Christmas holidays, Hillary scheduled it for that through Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Well, didn't uh, right. Star Wars come out that weekend as <laughs> yes. well? Probably, yeah. And then, I gave her and then the, the next opportunity one, to... Yeah, the next one's going to be this Sunday. You. So, yes, you know, NFL, NFL playoffs. Playoff, so, yeah, right? Hillary and, and uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz are doing a great job wow. of keeping that schedule. They've I had... I did not uh, realize that was this Sunday. Yeah, they've had a lot of debates on the weekend, but of course we have not uh, covered any of those. Now, what we're going to have, for those of you, uh, always when we do this, a lot of people say, shut up so we can hear the debate. <laughs> we are going to have the debate here. We're going to be looking at the um, closed captioning so we know what they're saying. But for the most part, we're going to be reading this and watching it occasionally. You'll hear what the candidates say. This is our live analysis and uh, commentary as to what's happening with the debate. So you can listen to it on a second channel if you wish. But what we're going to be giving you is our live uh, commentary as it's unfolding. Our live analysis. We're telling you what they really mean when they lie between their smiling teeth. So that's what you're tun tuning in to InfoWars for. Now, before we get to this debate, I have something I thought was interesting. And uh, you hit on this a little bit earlier today, uh, Dave, when we were doing the broadcast. Uh, Gary Johnson is going to be entering the race as a libertarian candidate. And, you know, I, I haven't kept up with him for a number of years, so I'm going to have to go back and refresh my uh, memory on his positions. But I'd definitely be interested to hear what he has to say and once again see if they would try to uh, blacklist him again like they did in the last election. Uh, yeah. They didn't want him anywhere near Obama and, and, and all everybody else. They said, no, Gary Johnson, you stay over there at, at the kids' table. Even though he had, you know, a sizable following similar to. I oh, probably wasn't pulling Ron Paul numbers, but he had a, a passionate group of followers. He had more than a million votes last time, but I think it was less than 1% of the vote. I was disappointed when he made his announcement, the uh, statement that I saw, the things that he was talking about. He said, we need to keep abortion and gay marriage legal. We need to keep uh, pot legal in the states where it's been legalized and make it and expand that. And then we need to make sure that we contain spending. He does uh, continue to run for, he said he was going to run for the nomination to challenge him, the Libertarian Party. That could be an interesting debate because McAfee could bring what I think are the current pressing issues, not yes. issues that were there four or five years ago. Uh, many issues which personally I don't agree with, but nevertheless, those are issues that are... are uh, so if we can past. get them on the table, I exactly, think that's exactly. at least something that's a step in the right direction. And what they said, they said there's been talk with the uh, debate commission time for the first time since Ross Perot was in. I think the only reason they're talking about this is because they're also looking at trying to force Donald Trump out through a crooked convention, okay? And if they do that, I could see him running as a third party candidate. I don't think they're going to bring a Gary Johnson or a John McAfee in uh, to a presidential debate. But if they pushed out uh, if they pushed out Donald Trump and he ran as, as a third party, they wouldn't have a choice, quite frankly. Right. Uh, I think it would, everything would the, the fraud would be so in everybody's face at that point that uh, it would not be tolerable. So, yeah. So, what's going on with the feed, guys? Have they started? I saw them doing some uh, ceremonies there. Are they going on a commercial break? Should we go to a commercial break? Let's go to a. They're in commercial break right okay. now. Let's go to a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. One second. <laughs> okay, one second. They're not ready for it.